Jeff Bezos has been working on Blue Origin for over 20 years at this point, having started way back in 2000. Despite this, though, people often discount Blue Origin as SpaceX has relatively made significant more progress despite having less funding and time. The ongoing feud between Bezos and Elon Musk hasn't helped Blue Origin's case very much either. NASA moon contract, rocket, engine, and now, what SpaceX just did with its second launch tower in Florida? It's a big slap to Blue Origin. Let's find out everything about this interesting topic in today's episode of the Alpha Tech Channel. Jeff Bezos is betting on space tourism. A conservative by nature, in business he's guided by a smooth development tactic based on the old military adage, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Blue Origin's motto, Gratitum Ferociter, is Latin for step-by-step step ferociously. After each successful launch, a tortoise is drawn on board the Blue Origin New Shepard rocket, which is a reference to Aesop's fable about the tortoise overtaking the hare. The long-term goal for our small team, says Blue Origin founder, is to find a way for a person to gradually get used to outer space. We will achieve it slowly, step after step be turtles, not hares, and spend resources wisely. Unfortunately, after nearly a decade, Blue Origin's turtle can't be better than SpaceX's hare in any way. Notably, during an unplanned meeting in Florida, Starship launch tower construction speed completely surpassed Blue Origin's New Glenn launch pad. In September of 2015, Blue Origin leased Launch Complex 36, or LC-36, in Cape Canaveral, Florida, to build a launch pad for the orbital launch vehicle New Glenn. Groundbreaking for the facility to begin construction occurred in June of 2016. By March of 2018, Blue's construction at LC-36 was lagging, but the company stated they did not think it would delay achieving the anticipated 2020 initial launch of New Glenn. However, it's 2022 and Blue Origin does not expect to launch New Glenn until 2023 at the earliest. The Blue Origin orbital launch site would be situated on a total of 306 acres of leased land assembled from former launch complexes 11, 36A, and 36B. The land parcel would be used to build a rocket engine test stand for the BE-4 engine, a launch mount called the Orbital Launch Site by Blue, and a reusable booster refurbishment facility for the New Glenn launch vehicle, which is expected to land on a seaborne platform and return to Port Canaveral for refurbishment. Space Florida's Dale Ketchum calls it a monster of a launch pad. It's going to be a beast, Ketchum said. But disappointingly, after six years, there's still a lot of unfinished parts here from Blue Origin. On the SpaceX side, building a Starship launch tower in Florida has not been in the main plan of Elon Musk. For years, Musk touted SpaceX's compound in Boca Chica as the gateway to Mars, the site from which his company would launch its massive Starship to carry astronauts to the Moon and Mars. But thanks to the FAA, that privilege could soon end as SpaceX CEO Elon Musk hinted the space company could eventually move operations to the Florida Space Coast. Uh, the future of Solvays, I think, um, it's, it's well suited to be kind of like our um, advanced R&D location. So it's like where we would try out um, new designs and uh, new versions of the rocket. Um, and. And, and then I think probably Cape Kennedy would be our sort of main operational uh, launch site. This means SpaceX has just built the Florida Starship launch tower early this year, but Mechazilla is rising incredibly fast. As of this moment, half of the tasks are successfully done. On July 20th, SpaceX rolled the fourth segment for the new Starship launch pad gantry toward Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Notably, the big crane awaited there. They've been doing a lot of prep, so it's likely ready for segment four to go up right up. Let's see. This fourth segment should bring the height up to around the crew access arm on the FSS at 39A. One more segment should be above the Falcon Tower. Segment number five is expected to roll out next week. The Starship Tower, once complete, possibly in a few months from now, will become the second tallest rocket-related structure along the eastern coast, with only NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building, VAB, being taller. A similar structure currently exists at SpaceX's facility in Boca Chica, Texas, where the 469-foot-tall Launch and Catch Tower is currently being put through test. 
In addition, the launch mount is designed to support the fully stacked Starship consisting of a super heavy booster and an upper stage. Powered by 33 methane-fueled Raptor engines, the reusable 30-foot wide or 9-meter booster will take off with roughly 17 million pounds of thrust. After the reusable upper stage takes over, the booster would return to the pad and attempt an assisted vertical landing. SpaceX is hoping to perform 24 Starship launches each year from Launch Complex 39A. Interestingly, SpaceX is also considering building a second Starship launch pad in Florida at an undeveloped site on the northern part of the Kennedy Space Center. Some signs were found, typically as Boca's brain pointed out, these feed here. These are for Tower 3's modules. According to Zach Golden, the process of constructing a third Starship launch tower likely is a year from now. All in all, the SpaceX Starship launch pad would undoubtedly be completed much sooner than Blue Origins. What a really big shame for Jeff Bezos. But you know it's understandable because simply the New Glenn is still basically on paper. As we mentioned in the beginning, New Glenn was delayed at least until 2023. And the latest in a string of delays for the rocket first unveiled in 2016 with the goal of sending crew and cargo much further into orbit at its unveiling the company claimed it expected to launch before the end of the decade in february 2021 the launch was pushed back from late 2021 to the end of 2022 at the time the company claimed delays were due to missing out on key pentagon launch contracts to the likes of spacex and ula Later that year, Blue Origin started a legal battle over NASA's decision to use SpaceX to provide a lander for its crewed lunar mission, a move that NASA's administrator, Bill Nelson, suggested could have delayed the mission. The latest comments around New Glenn suggest that even revised deadlines aren't going to happen. For now, Bezos and his team will have to stick with its suborbital flights that started in 2021. These smaller flights reach an altitude of just over 62 miles, a far cry from the ISS, which the likes of SpaceX and Roscosmos launch to on a regular basis, which orbits at an altitude of around 250 miles. After all, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin probably won't be able to, or even think of catching up with SpaceX. Just wish they could finally reach orbit, but honestly, I've hoped for this for too many years. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, hit that like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that icon bell so you never miss one of our updates. And we'll see you next time on Alpha Tech Channel.